Now uh, moving on to instrument racks. So instrument racks contain at least one instrument and multiple effects. And this is what you want to use if, like, say, you set up a, a bass sound and then you have some specific effects that you like to put after it all the time and you want to always have it like that and you can just drag it and bring it back in as like a preset. There, it's a really cool thing you can do. Um, Ableton Live was one of the first DAWs to have racks like this. Uh, and they started using, having it way back a long time ago, like uh, you know, 15 years ago or so. So it's been around for a long time and the things you can do with racks are incredible. And you can combine all the different rack types together. You can combine instrument racks with uh, drum racks with effect racks. And basically I should say that instrument racks and effect racks are essentially the same. Just one has an instrument and one does not have an instrument. So instrument racks have an instrument in them that you can play them, they're instruments whereas effect racks are just effects, just groups of effects. And you can do this stuff now in Logic and in Pro Tools, um, but, and I did talk about it in Pro Tools a little bit, and I can show you how to do it in Logic at some point if you want. But uh, Ableton Live is, in my opinion, kind of the, it's the most interesting one to use in this, in this regard because of just how it, you can set everything up, and you can do some really, really cool stuff in here. So I wanna show you what you can do with it. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to make an instrument rack. And uh, first thing I did was I just created a MIDI channel here by um, hitting Command Shift T. And I'm going to grab a sound and let's grab a synth. That's just a you know some kind of synth that just is what it is. Let's use um, let's use Diva, one of my favorite analog modeling synthesizers, and or. How about this? Let's crash Ableton Live. Yay. Thanks, Diva. You jerk. All right, so let's go ahead. Yeah, ignore. Let's go ahead and recover our work. <clears throat> so we have that funky drum kit that I just made. And this is a nice feature of Ableton Live that I like. It's usually pretty good about recovering your work and then not crashing again. Let's see if it crashes again. But basically what it's doing is it's restoring the live set in here. You can see it takes a little bit of time. It's grabbing everything back up. But um, we could report this crash if we want. I can send this crash report to Ableton Live, which I'm not going to do right now. But uh, I'm going to hit Command Shift T again. And we should have all the samples that we had made before. Yeah, we do. You can see the pan man is in here on our claw bay. So I'm just going to grab Diva again and drag it in. Let's see what happens. Are we going to crash things? No, I'm not sure why I crashed things the first time around, but whatever, it's not crashing it now. And inside Diva, Diva has a couple of effects. It's got a chorus and a, and a plate effect in here. You've got a couple things. You've got a chorus, phaser, delay, stuff like that, but not anything like, uh, like any kind of... Um, uh, compressors or anything like that. So I'm just going to turn both of these effects off in Diva and let's play some notes. Cool. I'm going to grab a uh, preset here. Let's grab a bass sound. That's a pretty cool sound. Let's see what's over here. go with this one here. Let's see if we can't make this a little bit more interesting. So in here, I'm just going to make sure all my effects are turned off in Diva, which you can hear they are. If I put the chorus on, it kind of thickens it up there. But I want to do that with a separate chorus. I want to show you how to, we're setting up an effect rack, right? So, or an instrument rack. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to delete this utility plugin. And you may have noticed that my utility plugin always shows up on every track. That's because I have it set for a default um, <clears throat> setting here and hands off hands hands of handle says do you have other sites YouTube etc yes there's actually a here's this boom Oop, pluck Pff, that's funny here let's go over here to let me just show you real quick here's my YouTube channel and so you can go in there and you can you know, you can watch these videos later on if you want. All right, so we have here, um, <clears throat> here's our diva. Let's go ahead and start with a little 
EQ and compression here. So I'm going to go in here to my compressor and I'm going to use a combination of third party and uh, native plugins in here. So let's go ahead and I don't have a compressor in here right now. So let's grab a compressor or audio effects. Let's use the glue compressor that comes with Ableton Live. And I'm going to just set that up. Put that like up that like that a little bit. Down here. Cool. Then we got that there. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and make Tony famous. Uh, let's go ahead and add in an octave underneath this. And this is something that I'm going to use from my powered plugins here. Let's see, is there octave? No, oh, sub. What, what would we call it? A sub. There we go. The sub synth. Let's grab a preset from in here. Let's see here. Bass, 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 anything. I, I remember thunder. Yeah, a little bit too far, right? That one's better. You hear how much low end it kind of adds on there. Much that really kind of increases that. Right, if I turn this off, see how it sounds now? And if I turn it on, adds a nice little bit of oomph down there. And I can just turn it off here, turn it down. Because we don't need tons. Right, there we go, that's a nice little amount. And I'm kind of over exaggerating here just so y'all can hear it more, but you get the idea. And now let's go ahead and add in a little chorus delay on it as well. A little, uh, not delay, but a chorus type of sound. Let's see here. Let's go back to plugins. Let's use my towel plugin. <clears throat> chorus LX. Go. Nice little spread on it. There we go. There's that. And finally, let's add a little clip on the top of it to see if we can't maybe saturate it here a bit. And for saturation stuff, I usually turn towards a decapitator here. We'll put that on. Let's see where we should put it. Let's maybe put it after this one, but before the other one. There we go. Cool, so we have that. So we had that little, you know, little line there, and I'm thinking, okay, cool. I like all these, this, how this all sounds together, and I want this to uh, kind of be a bass sound that I can pull up for any kind of funky sound, uh, Professor. The fire, thanks, Professor. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these here and 
move this, I'm gonna just gonna hold down shift and click on the last one over here and you can see that it highlights all of them. And now I'm gonna hit command G and it puts it in here into a, a group. And this is all you need to do to make an instrument rack. This is literally it. I've just made an instrument rack. And what I'm gonna do in here is with this instrument rack, I'm gonna rename it. We're gonna call this one Funk Bass Comp. Uh, it doesn't need to be all capital. Funk Bass Comp, like that. And let's just go to the beginning here and get put my initials on it, TG, boom. So now we just made the TG Funk Bass Comp. Now, let's go ahead and, and mess with some of these uh, macros in here. <laughs> nice, thanks, hands up. Uh, let's mess with some of these macros. Now what I mentioned before was what you can use these macros to assign them to different um, different parameters across all your plugins. <clears throat> so let's say the first one, let me just go ahead and save this real quick. I'm gonna put my keyboard mode into Ableton Live mode here and what that means basically is that <clears throat> when I, the blue hand here, see this blue hand? Let me pull up my proper camera so y'all can see what I'm doing here. There we go. So over here, the blue hand means that I can just turn my knobs on my keyboard and it will control these macro knobs here. So you can see they just kind of line up here. Number five is probably down here and six, yep, seven, eight, like that. So that's how this works here. So I don't actually need to do any assigning to these macro knobs. They're just automatically gonna work uh, with my keyboard here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map these macro knobs to some, in some different things inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up each one here with the wrench and we can see in here, here it is. And what I'll do is if I want to assign some knobs in here to Ableton, Check this out. I can click on this little arrow here, and now it says configure. And it says to add plugin parameters to this pr uh, panel, click the configure button. Well, let's do that. Let's click the configure button. And now, if I want to add something in here, I can click it down here. So I'm going to go ahead and click it in my parameter, and it says frequency is here, and emphasis is the uh, basically it's your uh, resonance amount here and keyboard tracking, we're gonna keep the keyboard tracking, we're going to, uh, let's see here, the mod to depth, yeah, we'll mess with that one as well, and let's just keep that how it is for now, just gonna kinda of make it a little bit on the easy side, and I'm gonna turn off my configure knob here, and let's make it so macro one adjusts my um, cutoff frequency amount. So I'm gonna click on the map button here, and I'm gonna click whatever parameter I want to map it to, and I'm going to click the map button right here on macro one, boom. Now if I turn this off, and I turn this one, we can see it is turning my frequency here. And you can see up here on the top of the screen, it's turning my frequency cutoff up here as well. So if I hit play, So I can do that there. Uh, let's, add, let's add this emphasis knob in here as well. So map this to my resonance. But, oh, it just crashed it. And this is a problem that I've had with Ableton Live uh, a bit actually is mapping things in with Live 10. And I'm not sure, I mean, the problem is Live just, I don't know, it has some bugs. And I'm not sure if it's because of the, the, the um, plugins that I'm using like Diva or if it's just a mapping thing. I've, I've had it on a few different um, plugins. So it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's not, I'm not super, super happy about it, but let's see what happens here. So I'm just gonna save it and let's open up our Diva again. Let's click on this one here and map it over. Yeah, see it's, now it wants to crash every time. So um, I, I've seen people who've had less problems than me with it uh, and and people who've had the same problems with me with it. So I'm not really sure. It has carried over into this new computer, 
I'm not sure exactly why it's a problem like that, but let's just see if we can map something else here. Maybe it's like a diva thing. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over here to my, let's, let's add less chorus in here. Let's do some chorus stuff. So if I click on my tile chorus, now what you'll notice is with this chorus here, there's not as many parameters and all these parameters that are in here are actually already mapped here in my configure window. And I can automatically, I can just grab them and, and move things around like this and move this stuff around. Now, one thing that you may you know, notice is that uh, maybe I don't need to have all these here. So I can click configure and I can actually click on these and hit delete to delete these different ones. Like maybe I don't need to have the, the dry wet there. I just wanna have these two here so I can turn these on and off. And maybe I wanna have it so one knob will control both of these and kind of flip them backwards. Let's see if I can map these or, or if it's gonna crash everything again. Will it crash? Ah, yeah. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and stop trying to do that right there. Let me, let me just show you a, a I'm kind of like wondering if I should just keep going with this or if I should just call it a day uh, because this is obviously not working out. It's nothing that I've done. There's nothing you can really do about it just except to kind of, I guess, give up. I don't know. I always just kind of give up because at this point I just get frustrated and I'm just like, you know, forget it. I'll just do things by hand. And really for me, I don't use these macro controls too, too much. And maybe this is one of the reasons why, but I just kind of tend to do things by hand anyway. Let me just show you one thing in here though that I can do without crashing things is I can assign things to one knob on my controller here. So you can see here they are. If I wanted to assign these to a knob on my controller, I can hit command M and see how everything turns blue. And I can just say, let's say knob number 16 over here is gonna control these two. But what I wanna do is I wanna flip these so that, let me go back into command M, so that when I turn one on, it turns the other off. And the way I can do that is up here in the left-hand side of my screen, you can see it says MIDI mappings and whatever knob I, co I connected them to is just right here. What I can do is I can flip this. So this says one and this says zero. So then now they're flipped. And what that does is when I turn this knob here, and I think y'all can see this. Yeah, you can see my keyboard controller down here. When I turn this knob, watch what happens. It actually flips these like that. So now you can see, if I put this here, zoom in on this. You can see it's flipping these back and forth like that. So you can hear the difference. Slightly different sound. Now, unfortunately, because I'm having a problem right now with the Ableton Live just crashing repeatedly, that uh, this, I, I can't save this with the sound, unfortunately. And again, I'm not really sure why this happens, if it's like a diva thing or what. I haven't really, unfortunately, I haven't really paid enough attention to it, which I probably is my fault. Um, but whatever, here it is. So now let's go ahead and save this sample, this, uh, this uh, funk here, this funk bass. So I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna click, it's already renamed, I already named it whatever I wanted to, and I'm gonna click on the disc here, and it's gonna go ahead and put it into my uh, user library. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into my Ableton plugins here. Here's my Ableton plugins. And in here you can see I've got a folder for instruments. Uh, let's see here, did I have the bass folder in here? Uh, no, I've got one for keys here, drums, relays. Let's make one for bass. And, uh, I've got one for other. Yeah, and this is like, you can see I've, I've dragged a whole bunch of things in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make one for bass sounds. I'm going to right click and go to new folder, basses, or just bass rather. Boom. So there it is up top. And I'm just going to drag in from my user library. I'm just going to drag this over. And the way that we do this is I click and I hold it down, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep holding it until I tell you that I'm gonna release it. So I'm holding my mouse down, I'm holding my mouse down, I'm dragging it over, letting it open up that folder up there. I'm gonna come up here to where it says base, and it's just on here. You can see this one's already kind of open here. I'm gonna let go, and it puts it in that folder right there. One of the things, when you're dragging things around in Ableton Live, if I wanna see what's in the folder, I click it, and it opens it up, and I can see what's in this folder already. And now you can notice when I drag it back and forth, it's gonna go ahead and highlight that folder there. And I'm just gonna 
keep it right there and not not move it. And this is a really cool uh, you know thing that you can do. You can drag things around with Ableton Live. It's a little bit hard to use with a mouse. Uh, what I mean with a with a mouse or with a um, with a, a trackpad because keeping the trackpad pressed down like that is a little bit. Mm, it's not my favorite thing to do, honestly, because I, I find that I'm kind of moving things around. I have to keep one finger on it. And same thing with a mouse, especially if you don't have a whole lot of uh, room to move things around. And that's why, let me just show you here. Yep, that's why. Oh, that's off the side of the screen there. That's annoying. That's why I actually use, let's see if I have enough. Here. I actually use a trackpad, a trackball mouse. This is the one I use. It's from a Japanese company called, uh, I think it's Elocom or something like that. I forget what the name of the company is. It says Deft Probe. That's not the name of the company. Um, I don't see the name of the company on here right now. But this is, this is a great trackball. I love this because it has multiple uh, buttons and it puts the trackball right here under my index finger, which is what I like to have. So I, I use it like this, and I use my thumb here to click the buttons. I don't like the trackballs that put it under your thumb because I find that, that that hurts my thumb after a while. And I use this here to move the mouse around, and I can just I can just keep the mouse in certain places and click that button repeatedly, no problem at all. And then I've got like right click, I've got left click, I've got some buttons set up for copy and paste and things like that. So I really love this. Uh, mouse setup and actually since we're on the subject of, of this setup here let me just show you one other thing that goes along with this mouse or you can use it for any mouse and I love this it's called steer mouse it's a, a piece of software that you download oh 5.5.1 cool all right so I'll remind me later and I can use this to actually set up all my buttons to do things on here and I can set up my wheel to do stuff like that it's uh here, let me click on the, this one here, the Def Pro, there we go. <clears throat> and you can see I've set this up to do a lot of different things in here. So forward shows me my desktop, FN2 shows me my mission control, FN1 is my click lock, FN3, this one here is, is Command C, which is copy, and Command V, which is paste, that's my back button. And you just have to kind of, you know, sh click on the button and then set it to whatever you want. You can, you've got a whole bunch of things you can choose from in here. So it's a really cool uh, mouse that I use and a little uh, thing that I got. And I think the Steer Mouse uh, software was like 20 bucks or something that's made by somebody in Japan as well. So pretty cool stuff. If you get it, uh, let me know. And if you're having troubles using it, I can help you out with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit out of that. And so we've got here our instrument rack. We just made this instrument rack. And so now let's go ahead and make a new track new MIDI track and I'm going to go ahead and drag this instrument rack in here and you can see that it just drags, it just puts everything in here and just opens all the stuff up. So I can just close that out and I can see exactly what I'm doing here and that's how we make an instrument rack in Ableton Live. Not hard at all, actually pretty easy and we're good to go here. And let me just, before we move on too far, because I do want to come back and talk about instrument racks a little bit more and dive deep into them here. But before we do that, I'm going to just show you what an effect rack looks like. And I've got uh, an audio track here. And uh, any kind of effect rack I want to make, it's the same as the instrument rack, it's just using effects. So let's say I've got this, it's a vocal track. And let's go ahead and put a, uh, some vocal effects on here. I'm going to start with an EQ8 with a little low cut. I'm going to take the utility off of here. And I'm just going to put a low cut on here like this. Drag that up. There's that. And uh, I'm going to turn off these other two, three, and four. We don't need those. And let's put a compressor in here. I'm going to use the glue compressor because that's my favorite compressor in Ableton Live. And I'm going to set it for some vocal settings. Just set that to a fast attack, slow release, slow, low ratio to the threshold down like that, maybe a little makeup gain. I don't have anything running through it, so I'm not exactly sure what my settings would be. But let's just say these are like this. And let's put another EQ on here just to make things pretty. And once again, we can use any EQ that we want. So I'm going to go over here to my VSTs and use the powered plugins. This is a mono plugin here. And we'll use a 
choose an SSL. Uh, do I use a channel strip? No, I don't want to use that one. I want to use an EQ. Hmm. Let's drag an API in here. Yeah, here's like an EQ. We can use this for this. <clears throat> and just set some settings. Maybe boost that one up a little bit and whatever. Just some basic settings here. Just a little bit going on here. Get rid of that. And let's do a little, let's throw a little tape on here, shall we? And for the tape, we'll use the Slate Digital Ones here, Virtual Mix Tape Machines. Drag that in. And in here, uh, just use this. Set some input settings here, outputs there. Just set up some, whatever, crunchy sound there. Boom. All right. Set that like that. And let's say, okay, cool, we're happy with all this. Oh, let's get a de shall we? Yeah, we probably need a de in here. So we're gonna use the one that the Ableton Live de -esser. Just it's like a preset in the uh, dynamic compressor. There we are. de -esser. We're gonna put that over here, boom, cool. All right, so we have all these plugins down here across the bottom. I'm just gonna click on the first one and hold down shift and click on the last one over here. <clears throat> and that highlights all of them and hit command G. And then over here, in order to give it a name easily to see the name, you can see the name is down here on the bottom. I'm just gonna open up the macro knobs here, hit command R and give it a name, TG, vocal, uh, chain, vocals, whatever. Don't need that VV. There we go. Boom. And save it with the disk. There we go. There it is under audio effect rack. And I can just drag it into my plugins over here. Vocals. Boom. And you can see other ones that I've saved in the past. Tony Vocals, Vocal Chop Chain, Steph Vocals, whatever. If you have different vocals that you're working with all the time, you can name them by the name of that person and you can just get in here and grab this and, and use it every time that person comes in. Because probably once you start using the same mic with somebody and they've got the, their kind of sound that they have, you might wanna use that same vocal chain repeatedly and here's how you can do that really, really easily just with some minor tweaks when they come in and, and, and do stuff. And that's basically it for setting up an effect rack. Uh, it's like I said, it's the same as the uh, instrument rack here that we just had a look at. Cool. So I'm gonna delete that out because I don't really need that here anymore. And let's go ahead and do some fun stuff here. Let's go ahead and set up a instrument rack with drum racks inside of it, shall we? And I wanna show you some cool stuff for this. And this is a way that we can make a really quick and easy instrument switcher or drum kit switcher. So if you were playing live on a stage and you had different drum kits that you wanted to use at different parts of your show, uh, this is what you could use to do that. This is a bit more advanced stuff, um, but it's, it's, I don't think it's too advanced that we can't at least take a look at it. And it is in the, um, it's in here in our, uh, in our notes here. So the effect racks, as I said, these work pretty much the same as the instrument racks, just without instruments, command G to create them. You can use uh, macros to control multiple parameters at once, but as you saw, my macros were crashing things out. Not sure why. So what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna drag a couple different drum kits in here. So first of all, I'm going to drag in my Tony drums that I just made. Over here, drums, uh, drum kits, TG, old school kit, drag it in here. And there it is in here, just open up the one folder here. So I've got this now. I'm not gonna, before I drag any other drum kits in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and create an instrument rack here. And you don't need multiple instruments to create an instrument rack. You can just do it without, just with one instrument in here, and Command G. And now, got this in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this window right here. I don't need my macros. And I don't need this one over here. I just need this one window here for now. And this is gonna work because I did put the drum samples on the same keys as I normally would. 
So here's my Tony uh, old school kit. And let's just grab some other drum kits while we're here. Grab this one here. I'm going to drag it down into the empty section down here. And again, let's, let's go down here and see what else we got. Yeah, I kind of like that one. And let's get what is this coral kit. Yeah, uh, Datai kit is pretty cool. So we've got these four kits here. And I just, all I did was I literally just dragged them down into here and just let go of my mouse. So we've got that there. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to, let's see here. Let's open up our macro. Now we do need the macros here for this. And what we wanna do is we wanna focus on this little section over here, key, chain, velocity, and chain. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. We can do it with keys and you can see here's a key mapping and I'll show you that one in a second. But what I wanna do is I wanna use the chain map here. This chain map allows me to put these drums on different chains. Uh, and so I can assign them to different knobs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to take this first one here, I'm gonna drag it over. I'm gonna divide this up into uh, roughly four sections here. And the reason why it's four is because I have four different drum kits. And so 127, that's around uh, 30, basically for each one 32 64 uh, whatever the next one is at 96 and oh wait let me change over my OBS so you can see my screen a little bit better there we go I'm gonna keep my keyboard on the bottom corner here Drag this one over like this, and there we go. So now I've got these different uh, areas here. And if I assign this to a knob, if I hit Command M, see how this part here turns blue? And I can turn the knob here. And now, there it is. I can move that around. So if I go ahead and input a drum beat, Like that, and we're gonna get so let's do some hi hat, uh, eighth notes, turn this down a little bit. There we go, cool. Let's hit play. Cool. Now, what I can do is I can use this knob here. To move this around. And every time I move it, you can see, or hear, I can choose my different sounds. And it's as easy as that. Yeah, it's a really cool little trick. Right? So we can do that. Now, if you want to take this one step further, let's say, let's let's here, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool stuff, right? So let's do this. Let's make a little chain out of hi-hat sounds, shall we? Uh, because I want to show you a really cool trick where you can kind of extrapolate this. Actually, uh, before we make that chain out of hi-hat sounds, let me just show you one other thing here. If I cross these over by like this much and if you can see where I'm mousing here, see how it's got this little line across the top? I can take this and kind of drag it over so you can see it's a little like a crossfade type of thing. And I'm just gonna extend these over like this and grab the top part here and kind of do a crossfade on these. And same thing over here, do a crossfade, move this over like this. And now when I go across them, you're gonna hear them 
actually morph from one kit to the next. how it's like kind of fading between these different kits. Which is pretty darn cool stuff. So uh, Dr. Bu says, do that follow note, uh, follow note repeat trick with hi-hats. Uh, yeah, so let's just show you the, the really cool hi-hat trick, which is, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same one you're talking about, but um, check this out. This is really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit this here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the hi-hats here. I'm going to mute them. And you can, the way I mute stuff, if you've been wondering how I mute stuff so quickly, is I just click on it and hit zero and it mutes the notes. And you can use that for clips or whatever. It works for everything in Ableton Live. Oops, wrong thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another little uh, kit over here. And we're making, we're going to make another instrument rack with uh, some different uh, drum sounds. And each one we're going to, let's see here, let's just grab a sound here. Let's, can we just, let's make a drum rack. Let's see. Drums, I'm going to go up here and grab some, a bunch of hi-hats. Where's my hi-hats? Hi -hat, there we are, hi-hats. And I'm just going to grab one and throw it in here for now. And I'm going to hit Command G on it turn it into an instrument rack. So I've got this instrument rack right here and I don't need to see my samples so much. And I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight a bunch of these and drag them down in here. So each one, oh, can I not drag them one, more than one at a time? Oh, okay, whatever, fine, here. We'll just drag them one at a time. Thought I could, well, Whoa, what happened? Drag a few of these down here. There we go. Thought I could drag more than one down. Yeah, why wouldn't it let me drag the other? Oh, I know why, because some of those were not, prob not samples. So here, let's see if this will work. Like a bunch of them, yeah, okay. So now I've just got a, a ton of these hi-hats in here. And I'm gonna go over here to chain. And what I'm gonna do is for each of these, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on its own little uh, row here. And what this is doing here is you can see it's got 128 of these like, uh, you know, like parts going across to the right. And what I can do with these is I can just click and drag each one over. And this, this does take a little bit of time here, but the result is well worth it. And I'm just going to go down all these and drag them over so that each one is on its own little number here. And you can see the number is, you can see where I'm putting it here. It just says, it tells me what the number is. And once I've got them all down here, now what I can do is I can assign this to my a, a knob, you know, on my keyboard here. That's actually not the same. That's the same knob. Sorry. Let's do uh, the knob next to it. There we go, 73. And now I can move this around. And there we go. So I've got that there, and I can restrict it if I hit Command. Uh, Command M, and I go up here to the top, I can restrict it so it stops at, what was that, like number 11 or so, like that. So now when I turn the knob, if you see on my, let's see, what am I, look? okay, yeah. if you see on my hand here, when I turn it, it's just gonna restrict it to, oh, that's too small, number, was it, 15. So 15 here, boom. Now, there we go. So you can see, here's all my, right, that, that did not work. 15, I said, 15, there we go. There we go. So you got these, I can move back and forth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna program in one 
uh, set, you know, let's go, let's just see, this is the, the normal one. And we'll just do a hi-hat 16th notes. Now if I hit go, whoops, pretty boring, right? But if I go back over here, I can turn my knob and I can go ahead and just make that and record that in. Now, if I wanted to record that in, um, here, let me just name this drum kit. And this one over here is closed hi hat brack. If I wanted to record that in, I can just go ahead and I've got two choices. I can record it as MIDI or as audio. Uh, I can show you each one here. So a couple things. One, I can just record it in as automation. So I'm just gonna go over here and do that. And now, let's and now it's just playing that over and over again. Yeah. This is a great way to add ear candy to the tracks. And it's something that a lot of people, the younger producers are, are missing because it's like hard to do otherwise. But this is a really uh, kind of a cool way to do it where this is really where Ableton Live, you're, you're kind of using the program to work harder for you instead of you working harder to make something sound cool. So let me just show you another thing you can do. And this is really gonna bring us into why I use Max for Live so much and little things like this. So I just went ahead and, and, and did that with my hand there, but let's not do that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete that automation there by hitting Command Delete on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up to do that for me um, instead of me doing it by hand. If, if I'm feeling like I just want some kind of super random stuff to happen, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Max for Live. I'm going to go into my MIDI effects, and let's grab the LFO here, LFO MIDI, and I can just I can put this anywhere in the whole session, but I'm just going to put it right here in front of it. So now what I'm going to do is this Max for Live MIDI here. I'm going to go ahead and slow it down. I'm going to turn the depth way down, so it's not nearly as huge. I'm going to put the offset down low, and what we're going to do is we're going to map it. I'm going to click this map button here map. I'm going to map it to this right here. Boom. And now it'll automatically move it for me. I can put the depth up a little bit. And I'm just going to, I'm just eyeballing it here. There we go. And you can see it's kind of just going over my chain selector here and it's moving it for me automatically. Let's set the rate up a little bit more and we can actually have that be as much as we want and we can have it be like uh, we can add some jitter into it like that. And now this is gonna be cool because it's gonna give us some silence as well. So if I hit go, and I could change the offset a little bit. And if you're not really super into whatever our samples are over here, you can change this. Like let's say I wanted to make this sample here. There we go. Now with this one here, you're gonna to have to record this. So what I would do is I would set up a new track and I'd call this closed hi-hat uh, random bounce and grab the audio from that closed hi-hat rack. Just hit record here and just record all this audio. Yeah, I'll show it again in just a second here. I'm adjusting the smoothness and the jitter just a little bit here. And we can do here, we can do a uh, random, and that's gonna, uh, it's gonna get a little bit too weird. And you just have to experiment with this stuff here.
How to apply this when you don't have Max for Life? There is no way you can apply it if you don't have Max for Life. You need Max for Life. This is a Max for Life trick. And I would say that there's so many cool reasons, there's so many good reasons to have Max for Live that uh, you should just, if you're using Ableton Live all the time and you're really serious about production, you're trying to do some really cool things and trying to basically get the software to work more for you instead of you working more for it, I highly recommend getting Max for Live. It's worth, the, what is the, uh, the upgrade to Max for Live is like $200 or something like that. The upgrade to Suite is like 200 I think. Um, it's totally worth it. Uh, because it's some, you're going to use it forever. I mean, Max for Live is just, it's got so much cool stuff in it, between from instruments to effects to MIDI effects like this. There's so much really cool stuff in Max for Live that you can use. So I highly recommend it. Um, I use Max for Live a lot. There's, there's so much cool stuff. It's, it, it, is, it is included in the suite. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Going over this one more time, let's just do this in slow motion again. So the first step, let me just delete this out of here. The first step is that you have to set up this chain thing here. So you drag a whole bunch of samples into a drum, uh, into an instrument rack. And it's not a drum rack, it's an instrument rack. So we drag a whole bunch of samples into the instrument rack like this. And we put them, go over here to chain mode here, turn this on to chain, not, not key, not velocity, chain and then you're going to drag each of these drum samples onto its own little part of this chain. The more drum samples that you use, the more you have to kind of do this here. So if you want 64 drum samples, you're going to be mapping it over 64 times. Remember, we can save this though. So once you do this, you're only doing it once, and then you're going to be able to generate all sorts of different sounds. So I don't think, I wouldn't call it like a waste of time, but it is time consuming. So once I've got this here, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get my LFO MIDI effect here. <clears throat> if you don't have LFO, uh, the LFO MIDI effect, um, you just gotta make sure you download some of the basic Max for Live pat packs. This is one that comes with uh, Ableton Live, but you gotta download it. So it doesn't come straight out of the box with it. You just have to make sure you download that. And you can just do a search on, on, on uh, your search engine for um, Max for Live LFO MIDI, and you'll be able to find it. Um, I almost said Google. I'm trying to use Google less and less these days <clears throat> because of all the tracking and stuff. I'm using DuckDuckGo now. <laughs> uh, anyway, LFO MIDI, I'm going to just drag that down. I'm going to place it right here before my instrument rack. It actually doesn't have to be on the same channel. It can be anywhere you want it to be, but it's just easier if you put it on the same channel. And what you could do is you could actually have these grouped together into an instrument rack. We can have an instrument rack inside of an instrument rack. How crazy is that, right? So now I've got this here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign it to this over here. So I click map, and now it's flashing, and it says, where do you wanna map it to? I could map it to anything on here. I could, I could map it to this uh, pan knob up here. See, if I map it to the pan knob, it's gonna just turn that pan knob like crazy, and I can adjust the rate and slow that pan knob down. Uh, but I don't wanna map it to the pan knob, so I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna click map, and I'm gonna map it over here to this. And now we can see it's doing this whole thing and you can see it's going across the whole range. So what I wanna do is I wanna restrict that range. Oh really, bought out? Hmm. Well, I'll do some research on it. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, depth here, so I just click on the depth and you can see it's restricting it to this range here. I wanna offset it so it's just dealing with these here. And maybe what I wanna do is actually move these over and that would take me some time so I'm not going to do it right now but you might want to put it actually more in the middle of stuff because when I offset it like this you can see it spends more time down at the left hand side so I'm going to change my depth here to this here and let's move let's move some of these over here I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a whole lot of this but I, I'm just going to show you that you could just kind of put it here whoops into the you know, move these around so they're all kind of like this. Boom, and just drag these around. So now you can see I've got a few of these here in the middle, and I think the middle is probably a better place to put these than right over on the left-hand side. I just 
uh, was just being a bit lazy there. And the reason why it's better to put it on the left-hand side is because now it's not going to spend as much time. Yeah, cool. So this should be good. Yeah, cool. So now if I hit play, whoops, turn this one off here. And you can see it's, uh, oh, it's going over here on the left here. Okay. And I always like to keep one space open so it's not, there we go. So now it has one space of silence in there just so it you can put some silence in there. And again, the next step you would do is, let's put a little jitter into this. There we go, yeah. Turn that depth down a little bit, a little bit more jitter. Now what we would do is we'd record it and just remember I just made an audio, a track here, a new audio track, I just gave it a name, I set the audio from to uh, closed hack rat, rack, post effects here, make sure the auto, uh, the record is on and just record this. And now hit play on it and stop this one. And now we got a nice little loop. <clears throat> now what I want to do with this loop is I want to make everything shorter. So it's like really short. So everything is a closed hi-hat. So I'm going to go into my clip, go to volume here, and we're going to go ahead and just drag this one down. Whoops. Put a point there. There we go. And I'm just going to, oops. Highlight this and just Command D that across. Now everything's nice and short. Turn it down a little bit. Cool. And we can put, uh, you know, now we can just put whatever effects on it and stuff like that that we want. It is an audio loop, so if we want to change it up. You know, just make sure you record more and you have a couple different varieties and variations to go through. And you can just grab those. And so I got that one there. The first one recorded here. Let's loop this at a what, four bar loop, not two bar loop. So I got that one there. And So we got this loop here and this loop here. And this one here, maybe you want to put some silence in it, just kind of force it to have some silence. So let's go back into our clip. Let's use this one here and we'll just put some silence in here. Oops, just this one. Cool. Silence is always a good thing, right? Sweet, and that's how we can do that. Make sure you save your rack after you put all this work into it. Do not not save it. Hit Command R on here. Let's call this a random closed hat rhythm. Put my initials on the beginning. TG, boom. <clears throat> and there we go. Uh, so it'll just do that. Every time I load it up, it'll just do this right out of the box. And so I've got these cool sounds in here that I can mess with. Now, you could take this even a step further and you can have different sets of hi-hats in here so you can change it up uh, with what I showed you before with the, um, the knob and stuff like that. All this really cool stuff that you can do with it. You can have uh, groups within uh, instrument um, uh, racks within racks within racks within racks. The, the rabbit hole goes extremely deep. There's no um, limit to how far that rabbit hole can go down. And with what I used to, what I used to do this a lot with, I mean, I do it in production stuff nowadays, but what I used to really use it a lot for was on stage with our drummer. And I had several different um, drum kits set up like in this one over here. And instead of having it mapped to a chain for a knob, I had it mapped to the velocity. So we had an electronic drummer on stage and one song, the harder he would play, the more it would hit, uh, the more it would change the sounds, and then it would come back and change the sounds. 
in a separate way. And actually, if you want to see that in action, and also you want to see uh, an old school gothy version of me, you can go in here and you can do a search on YouTube for Echo Stream uh, Creep. And this one here, I'm not going to play it for y'all, but y'all can go watch it if you want. Here it is in the, there, boom. Uh, that one there is, you can, you can see this in action. You can see all this stuff happening uh, uh, with the drum kits. If you listen, there's two drummers. There's an acoustic drummer and there's an electronic drummer. And if you listen carefully, you can hear all these really cool drum samples being played. Um, and this is what I'm doing. I'm using this kind of setup for to trigger those different drum samples because the, 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 the problem was how do we get these drum samples so they sound organic but we're using samples and the solution was have them set for velocity level so he hits it harder it plays a different drum kit and I had all these samples in there and I had like maybe five or six different drum kits in there with different samples the kick is on this one the snares on this one the hi-hats on this one but as he played harder it would kind of open up this ring modulation effect which I could have done in real time with ring modulation, uh, but I did it with samples because I had very specific samples and they weren't all just ring modulated, they were different samples. So you can hear it in that, uh, in that version of Creep if you listen hard enough uh, there. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much it for this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording now.